Hey guys, Richard of Fish and Auto Channel and Reefs.com. How are you guys doing today? I'm here at actually at my house in sunny South Florida. I'm here with my good friend Kevin and we're about to do something crazy in our tank. Check it out. Hey Kevin, how you doing man? Pretty good Richard, how are you? Good, good. First of all, thanks for coming down. Uh, I know you live so far from Fort Myers. I appreciate you coming down to help me out today. I first saw your post on Instagram uh, about your pH scrubber and like the, what was interesting was that you're doing everything DIY. Tell me a little bit about them. Yeah, a couple friends and I um, were talking about scrubbers in a little chat we got and one of, one of my good friends found a bunch of uh, interesting stuff on Reef to Reef about recirculating CO2 scrubbers and after our conversations, a little of my own research and things like that, this is kind of what I came up with as far as uh, maximum contact time, things like that is the way I did it. I mean, it's cheesy poof containers, acrylic, or you know, whatever. You, you can pretty much use anything to make a scrubber. Really? That's yeah. awesome. Actually, so like with the parts and stuff like that, you said you could use uh, almost anything to make. Like, I mean, where would you get these kind of parts? Um, I got a lot of this stuff I sourced off Amazon. Okay. Um, Know, acrylic tubing. I know you can get like shop vac, okay. clear acrylic shop vac tubing, really? things like that. Um, I also found that the uh, three inch diameter tube was, as far as cost effective, was the way to go. Okay. Uh, if you go bigger diameter, the, the prices increase. Exponentially, mind, right? Yeah, it's mind blowing. Yeah. So, um, just keep that in mind. Sure. So let me see. So something like this one, you made, looks like you made the stand here on your own. And you got the, 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 the nylon. The connectors for the hose. Right, right. Um, I just razor bladed some foam, right. aquarium foam for the top and bottom for filter. Right, right. Uh, drilled and tapped for nylon screws. Mm -hmm. Added an O-ring for a seal. Right. Um, it's, it's really pretty, pretty simple. It takes a little bit of time, but you know, yeah. it's a hobby and I enjoy doing this kind of stuff. So. Right, and I see you, have mul you brought multiple over here. Um, the first one is a little bit different. Tell me about the first one. Well, since you already have an outside airline, yes, um, I put a little carbon in the top, right? And then I put scrubber media, yeah, below that, so it's yeah. going to scrub the outside air. Also, that the skimmer is going to draw a little bit regardless, right? So we're going to utilize your outside airline also, scrub that, yeah, and um, and then seal the system up and use those like a DI in series. Gotcha. So, so one will wear out, the other one will act as a backup, mm -hmm. and then you can just rotate the rotate the cylinder. Wow, so we got three containers. <laughs> yeah, it's it's probably close to two gallons of uh gallon and a half, two gallons of media. Gotcha, gotcha. Which is I would say probably close to eighteen pounds. Wow. So. You know, and then um just just for I know that people are gonna ask, um how long the media will last will depend on the tank, tank and how low your pH is. So, you know, every tank will be different. So we can't really give you an exact value of how long these medias will last. We'll just have to tell you that you're going to have to put it on your, on your tank by, your, by yourself and figure, find out how much uh, pH or, you know, CO2 is, is actually scrubbing. Okay. And wow, I just can't wait to get this started. As you know, I have a chronically low pH. <laughs> so I appreciate uh, any efforts that, that you were making today to... Well, we're going we're gonna to try it and see what happens. Perfect. Um... All right, Kevin, so what do we do today? Uh, got in really tight spaces yes. and hooked your scrubbers up and mm -hmm. hopefully get you enough pH increase that will benefit your tank and your coral. Gotcha. So, so like we mentioned before, we have three of them in there. And then explain to me what those threes are. Okay, the, the far back one has the carbon on top. That's the extra air 
mm -hmm. from outside that the skimmer is going to draw on the closed system. Gotcha. The next two are are piped in series. Yes. So one will expire, the other one will be the backup, mm -hmm. and those are sealed, run pulled right through the venturi. It's going to keep scrubbing whatever CO2 your skimmer produces. Yeah. It's going to scrub that out and replenish hopefully better air back into your system. And it will give you a pH increase. It just, every system's different. Um, so I'm, I'm very anxious to see actually how much gain you'll get on your system because everybody's different. Some people can get a half, yeah. some people get 0.3, and some people it's not even worth it for. So it's gonna be very interesting for me to see. In about two weeks, you'll, you'll notice, Yeah. you know, give it about 14 days and, and it'll, it'll tell you where you're at. Perfect. You do not want wet media. Mm -hmm. uh, you do not want um, dust getting pulled back into your system either. The media right. is not good in your system dissolved in any way, shape, or form. Yeah. That's the only hazard with it. Other than that... What happens if it gets wet? Uh, it melts. Okay. And um, it's, you don't want it in your reef tank. Okay. So, it, but dry, moist media, mm -hmm. it, it works properly. Um, there are a few cases I've, I've heard of from people that they're getting cheap cut rate media from other countries sourced out of the country and things like that and they're having funny things, let's just say funny things show up in their ICP test. Um, the media I get, I source from a veterinary supply, mm -hmm. it's medical grade yeah. and I haven't seen anything out of the ordinary in my ICP tests at all. Perfect. So. All right, man. I'm anxious to see the result of this. Well, thanks for coming down, Kevin. I really appreciate you. Oh, you're very welcome. All right, man. This is what I, you know, I think this is what hobby is all about, helping one another, you know? It, it definitely is. At yeah. least for me, and you're the same way, you know, it's just a group of people that enjoy the same thing. So, you know, I'm just here to help you out. And, it, you know, it's fun. For sure. It's, it's fun hanging out. So. For sure. And for those of you guys who is interested in this, you could check out Kevin's uh, Instagram page where he has listed all the parts and all the things that he have done with it. Uh, Kevin, can you give us your Instagram uh, tag? Coral.crazy. Coral.crazy. Gotcha. With the K's instead of the C's. And you can check out his adventures with these scrubbers over there. All right, guys. So with that out of the way, we are going to go get some clams because you know how much I love my clams, right? Let's go. I'm here at the residence of Dr. Fraggett. He's a local aquaculture specialist in South Florida, and I'm here to pick up a giant clam. He's a monster. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. No, you're good. Sweet. Awesome. Alright guys, the clam is in. We had a very productive day today. Sometimes we need a day like this where we could just sit down and work on your tank and just have a peace of mind in our aquariums as we watch these things thrive and are the slice of ocean that we have created for ourselves. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys liked it, be sure to comment below and tell me what you think about that clam. And let's see you guys another week. Take care.